Karen the Warp Spinster here. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for spending some time with me today. As you can see, I'll be doing some more on Strip Stripe. More about that in a minute. And I also have a quick update on the bungee quilt project. And then we'll start a new scrap project. I just want to assure you that at least for projects that I plan to do anything more with, I am working on them. I'm just kind of a slow quilter, sewer, piecer sometimes. If you're on Instagram, you might have seen my reel a couple of days ago where I expressed the just enjoying the journey as I'm sewing along. I know many people who are much faster than I am and works great for them. Not so much for me. All right. So I took a photograph of the quilt as it's pieced. The pressing is not real impressive yet, but <laughs> it will get there. And I have also then created some layers with rings. And there is a pesky piece of hair I cannot get rid of here today. Rings and I have an arrow shape here and a circle and then a circle that sort of simulates a black and white print. Not a very good one. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a great simulation. So I have those at the ready. Now, as I've been thinking about this, I've been wondering if I maybe don't want to have just rings. And I have several colors, a few different sizes on here, just distributed around. I've been playing with this just a little bit. And so that's a possibility. I think I might also want one. I cleaned this screen. I don't know how long it's going to last. <laughs> Sorry if you're seeing fingerprints. I think I may want one up here. So I'm going to duplicate the green one, move the duplicate up here somewhere. And I think as it's going up, I want them to be smaller. So I could start doing smaller pieces up here. I wonder what would happen if I even had something going off the top. I'm not sure about that. And I may not want it to be yellow. And I think I'll just hide that one for the moment. Now, if I, what happens if I bring in, say, an arrow shape? Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Arrow shape, which of course could be any color. In fact, let's make that say orange. So we'll take this color, come on, we'll take this color. Oh, sorry. Yikes, this is a lesson in how not to use Procreate. And then I can, I remember when I was doing it with physical pieces that I thought I might want them pointing in different directions so that the eye moves around the quilt. So I could certainly do that. And I can change colors here in a minute. And these, of course, could be different sizes as well. I'm tending, I think, actually, and they don't need to be in the north, south, east, west orientations exactly, of course. All right, so I'm going to make the north pointing one. Let's make that purple. And this one south point I will make pink may not in fact be the same pink as that one but now my issue with this as I start adding this in is it begins to look cluttered to me and maybe it's because I have so many rings but the rings are one of my favorite shapes for this so I don't know that I want to not have many rings. Yeah, I don't like that smaller. It 
gets lost amazingly. <laughs> it's out in the middle of nowhere and it looks lost. Now, of course, I have other options. I could do black circle. I could do any color circles, actually. And I believe I had something like this originally. And I, I like that combination. I'm not sure this is the place for it. All right, what if we just hide all of the rings and go with, now it looks like a face <laughs> with this eye winking. All right, I'm not gonna be able to unsee that now. That's unfortunate that I saw that and that I then put it into all of your heads too. Uh, that's better. It It's not as cluttered. It does move the eye around a little bit better. I'm wondering if I take this purple one and move it this way. I'm going to have to do something with that because that's just too much like a mouth for me. In this context, I'll just switch, the, switch those around. Okay, that's better. And I have been thinking about this as kind of a very vertical sort of arrangement. And as I'm doing this, while I don't necessarily dislike this, I'm losing that verticality. So I would need to think about how much I care about that verticality or do I like this better anyway. And that can change size, of course. It could also change color, but I think that black contrast has some value. This way, let me think about this. This way, it almost seems as if these stripped pieces go more into the background and these become prominent instead of being accents to the background. So it would be another way to look at this, that these stripped pieces are just the background for some other design concept. Um, 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 um. Oh, there's a squirrel come to say hello at the patio door. All right, I have a lot going up, which is the general direction if I'm thinking of verticality, but I don't have anything going down. So let me whip that around. And probably if I change those colors, that might be so if I had this one be, say, the green color. And, hmm, I kind of like it better with the pink. It, it, there's so much color going on in the background. I think if I want these to stand out, certainly the black circles help that. But having just a couple of colors may in fact, I don't know what else is with that thing, but let me, sorry, housekeeping detail. And, and do I want little black circles with all of them? Did 
different sizes of circles. It's not a bad concept. I'm going to, oops, I'm not, yeah, that's just, no. <laughs> I'm just going to delete that as a matter of fact. Immediately no, as they say. Immediately no. And I would ordinarily have larger, heavier items at the bottom, sort of ground things, give it weight there. I don't know, possibility. So I'm going to do a screenshot of that. Sorry for moving things. And then close all those out. I should make that a group, but I will do that later. And now put in the rings again so we can see the difference. All right, so now it has the rings have less effect on overtaking the background. They aren't receding. You can see them, but they aren't overwhelming it. It's more of an accent addition. Now, that is not to say that the other way is bad or wrong. It's a different approach to it. The other thing I was thinking about is doing something with, this is a ring, so what if I have a circle that is, say, coming out from that ring? So let me just take one of these black circles, duplicate it, hide that, and let's change that circle to, which one is it? Oh, it's the only one showing, Karen, duh. Now, if I make that circle and I think putting it over the circle as if it's moving out is not going to work but if I move it under the circles or into the ring sorry then that adds a little something more to it wouldn't have to be all of the rings. What if that was black though? Let's move that say here and I can get some eye moving around by changing where that circle is. So this one's going up that direction, that one's going that direction. Certainly can change the size. Let's make that one a little larger just to see what happens here and have them different amounts showing or further toward the center of the circle, further away. Black accent is, I don't know, kind of nice, but I'm not sure that I want it there. What if I made that, say, a dark gray? Where do I have a dark gray here? Without having to manufacture one. That's a very taupey gray. Eh, if I want a gray, I don't want it to be very taupey. And that's still kind of a... All right. Pardon me while I... Clean this up a bit. And let's make it a little cooler in tone. Okay. Yeah, not much better. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> Never mind. So anyway, this is the kind of playing that I'm doing with it, and I'm going to need to spend some more time with it. 
I really am kind of liking that little surprise now and again with something peeking out of there. And maybe I need a few more rings in there, or maybe they would be overkill. Probably would not make this one pink. It's too close to that one, but we don't have an orange one there, do we? Oops. So I would need to play with the, the color and the size and the location, but that's an option. So I'm gonna do a screenshot, sorry if it wiggles. And I'll post those two at the end so you can see the difference between the two. Let me know what you think. And if you like the circles in the back of the rings, um, well, here's a thought. I'm going to try this. I can back my way out of it, which is why I, I feel comfortable doing this. <laughs> I am going to change all of, well, let me change some of them first, see how they look, to black. And see how that goes. Oh, pile up again. Okay. And then, I don't know which one this is. I will speed through this so you don't have to watch me change them all. All right, I'm not at all sure I like that. It's a possibility. Maybe if I did some more circles underneath with different colors. Back to this one, change the size of that, change it to, I don't know, a pink. Give me a hot pink color or thereabouts. Well, let me use this pink, I guess. That would tone down the starkness of the black rings which may defeat the purpose of, well, that's pink isn't a good option over there, is it? Because we have pink right next to it. There we go. And yellow right next to it, of course. Anyway, um, I don't know, that's a, a look. Let's try a pink for the one down here at the bottom, whichever one that might be. I'm getting pretty good at guessing, aren't I? Oops, nope, wrong. Honestly, this is really why I like to do this in private because, <laughs> oh, well, you understand. All right, so there's another option. Let's screenshot that. And I'll show these at the end again so you can kind of take a look at it. So here's my dilemma. You could see all kinds of things that I can do. And I guess they basically break down to this just being a background of some other pieces on top. The more I look at this, the more it's growing on me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to live with it for a while. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about the whole thing. And let's move on to the bungee project. Here is a kind of pathetic photo of the bungee project. <laughs> I have done the basting. I um, thread based if I'm going to be using my domestic machine. And this is good practice for me on my domestic machine. I have a couple other projects that are going on the uh, long arm and so I wanted to do this one. This is just curvy lines on this one, which is reasonably easy to do on the domestic machine. It's not even a very large quilt and it's just a lot of wrangling the thing around. So um, it looks pretty wrinkled because it kind of is. It's been 
<laughs> shoved around under the machine. But it's coming along and I'll just take my time with it. But it is getting there. We are making some progress. Now, back to our strip project. Got a new one going on here. Oh, yesterday I was doing um, one block wonder quilt. I have, I don't know, something like 16 of them down there in progress. I've made eight or nine. And I was using this Gowana walkabout fabric. It's, I don't know that you can get it anymore. It's from, I don't know, probably at least three or four years ago. But she does have some, this is from, I want to say Paintbrush Studio, I think. And she always has wonderful fabric lines out. So I have a few new scraps in the bin. So this is going to be strips again of unequal length. Probably, yes, for sure. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be unequal length, unequal width. Don't necessarily have to be parallel straight strips. And the basis for this is I'm, I'm trying something, just doing a wonky traditional block. It's not really a block, I guess. If you're familiar with the, the braid pattern or Pioneer braid, and let's, I'll just take a couple of strips here. So you have... One strip, you start there, and then you, better look an end than that, then you sew another strip there, that's your start. You could start with a square here, too. And then the next strip goes on here, etc. So it's kind of like a log cabin on point, I guess, sort of. And traditionally, these would be the same width and the same length. And when you get them finished, you're going to have, where are strips when we need them? Sorry about the rattling here. These would be the same width and length, and then you trim it here so that these end up being bias edges. So you have to be really careful when you're sewing them together. So that's the basis for what we're starting. Now, what I want to do is create one that is sort of wavy, wonky. I mean, not, not any particular way that I, or curve that I wanna follow, but just something wonky. So different widths of strips, different lengths, um, Probably different width is going to be the most important here. We'll find out as we go along. But if you think about the log cabins that are curved log cabins, and they've got one side has narrow strips and the other side has wider strips, which gives it a, a curved sort of look. So that's what I'm aiming for. And I think maybe I want some strips that aren't perfect strips. So... They'll be more wedge-shaped, although not necessarily greatly so. And I think I want one side to be bright colors and one side to be black, white, and black and white. So, oh, I have to say I went to a local-ish quilt shop again the other day, and I was waiting to have something cut, and I looked over, and there's this wonderful fat quarter bundle of black and white prints. And I had my hand on it. I had my hand on it. And I put it back down. <laughs> Said, I have enough. I have enough. It was a beautiful bundle. I'm going back there next week, or this week. And uh, I don't know. Might be mine in the end. It's an obsession. It is an obsession with me now. All right, so I'm going to start. And I think... I want the bright over on this side and the black and white over here. So I will start with, these are pretty even strips. Again, it, you could start with a square up here. Much of this would be trimmed off ordinarily. I'm not, so ordinarily when you do it, the top of it would be trimmed across here. I'm not convinced I'm going to do that. So 
we'll see. Um, ordinarily, I would say you could use a fabric you don't like that much up here because most of it's going to go away. <laughs> but I'm not sure it is going to in mine, and I, I have lots of fabrics that I like. So I'm going to, let me grab my rotary. And I'm going to use a ruler just to keep me under control a bit. And this length is going to be, I don't know what. I want to show you here, um, let's do it this way. So the white bean first. Now, if I do all of these strips the same length, or roughly, then as I move down, you can see that this is going to be staggered. That's what gets trimmed ordinarily. Will I do that this time? I don't know. But I'm not planning on having strips the same width all the way around. That's just how the traditional pattern would go. All right, so I also do not need to make these straight on the ends. So I'm going to start with these two. I'll sew this together and then I'm going to come back and start making these narrower on this side and we'll see what happens. So I have the first piece sewed here and I tidied it up a little just for you. Now I want to do my next one is a black and white side. So and this is a very narrow strip. We're going to start playing with the length of strips, or the width, sorry. So this will go on next, and I can decide. I don't want to keep just going out this way. I don't think it will. Yeah, that's just going to be too much. I'm going to cut this off, say, about there. It doesn't have to be precise. And sew this on because it's so narrow. I'm narrow. I'm probably going to sew a little bit smaller seam than a quarter inch. I have oops, that's the wrong side. I have noticed. I noticed it especially yesterday when I was working on the one block wonder that a quarter inch seems really wide to me now for some reason. I don't know why. I've been using quarter inch forever. So I don't know what that's about. But. All right, so this goes on next. Now I added on a, another wide bright strip here, and now I want to do another strip on this side, probably narrower than this, but not as narrow as that. So I am trying to vary the width of the strips here. I'm also, at least at the start, I don't want to put another white on black next to this. I want black on white next to it so there's some contrast between the two. I may find out later that I don't really care if I do that or not. But for now, I'm going to start with that. And make that piece maybe about that long and I'm going to make it narrower. I don't know by how much, but just a little bit narrower than it is here, but not as narrow as the one it's going next to. And then I'm just going to keep doing that. And I do think I want to try making these. In fact, I might do that right here since it's already got a bit of a curve on it. Making these not necessarily straight parallel lines. Might come to regret it. I don't know. But we are going wonky, so, you know, why not? Okay, and maybe I'll make the bright side wonky and the black and white side the more staid side. <laughs> the more sophisticated side. I'll make more even. So I'm going to do just a few more and we'll see how this goes. I have a few more added and these are starting to be too uniform in width. They are narrower, which is good, 
but I want to start making some very much narrower, so more like this. And this one, if you remember, I made that a little bit wedge-shaped, and I decided to continue that a bit. And I may at this point want to start going the opposite. So if you think about flipping the wedge shape and the narrower side will be here. And I'll see how that goes. I like having that stripe in there. I think it's about time for a black and white stripe over here, don't you think? Don't you think? Although if it's narrow, it'll probably look more like polka dots. We have a good healthy start on this one and I really went with a pretty severe wedge shape here and you can see this crossed over but I'm all right with that because we are just playing. I also did another piece because I'd kind of like to see how they work together. You can see this one did more um, I guess a couple more wedge shapes in here but it's a little less uh, how shall I say a little less wonky than this one and I can do something like this when I get more pieces when I get them longer if I decide I want them longer, you know how I am. This turns it into, you know, kind of a more log cabin look than I think I might want. I would get the braid look if I did them side by side, more like this. Now, if I want this undulating curve, then at some point I'm going to need to switch these to be the wider and these narrower, is how I'm looking at it. Could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. All right, that is where I'm at so far with these. This one I think I still want to be narrow. And you know, there's always a little part of me, a little part of me, wants to do something fun and funky with a bias stripe. What can I say? Probably not, but hey, or a black and white circle, or a black circle in there, or a white circle, I don't know. I did have a black circle roaming around here somewhere, but I'm sure it's buried now. I'll just cut another one. There we go. Just as I was cutting my black circles, a black squirrel appeared outside my window. They are beautiful little creatures. Nice sable black color. All right, the black circles, I was thinking they'd want to go over here, but they could something like that little black polka dots in black and white that's probably a little large but I don't know I kind of like the black circles going through it I think we did a half circle semicircle whatever yeah don't know about that I am kind of liking it but Karen you say aren't you getting ahead of yourself why, yes. Yes, I am. What else is new? I have to keep thinking about where the center line is here, such as it is. Make sure that I have things turned properly. And am I even going to want those to be right next to each other? And what if I trim that <laughs> All right, so the line really is kind of here. And the line for this one really is kind of there. Maybe what I could do would be to do every other one so that this stays as it is. This is narrow over here and wider over here. 
so that they're in opposition to each other. This way, they're too much alike or something, I don't know. Of course, I don't have to have them going straight. Because they're going to, I think, be kind of curvy. When I trim these, it will be more so. These are very much too long. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them because they're just very too much long for the effect that I want to show and I need to, I need to be seeing it. Okay. Definitely like the black circles. I would need three, <laughs> of course, and varying sizes. I don't know about a white circle on here. It would shadow through so much. Hmm. I don't know, but they do definitely add a nice spark to that, don't they? They do, they do. All right, I will see if I can do some more work on this this week. Um, if not, I'll add some more and do some more thoughts next week or, you know, do something different. I don't know. <laughs> That'll be it for this week, though. Um, next week, who knows, anything goes. I hope to see you then. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out.